Time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining me to review the papers this morning is Professor Camillo Sanifage. He's from the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, joining us from Kanu. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. All right, we'll be starting with the Guardian, with the Vanguard this morning, I beg your pardon. And the Vanguard leads with consumer spending down as Nigerians remain gloomy on economy. The writer here says weak spending triggers decline in e-payment transactions. Value of e-payment falls 5.7% to 92.8 trillion naira. Firms reduce output expansion due to low consumer spending. So, of course, we do not have the spending power anymore. And maybe, obviously, it's because of the current economic realities we have in Nigeria. But I want to take, I want to have your take on this. Knowing that our spending is down, we're not, we don't even have enough money. Most times, people don't have enough to even feed. Talk more about luxury. But what do you think of this story? Yeah, it's um, part of the, uh, the effect of the economic problems and challenges that we are having. Um, there's high inflation. Um, there is also, you know, the downward trend in the purchasing power of the people. So in this situation, it doesn't take any rocket science to know that one has to, uh, um, the, the purchasing power is down, therefore, uh, all these uh, uh, problems will be compounded by the fact that the ordinary person cannot afford basic things. So, in a result, you know, what you have, since the income has not increased, uh, it, it was or it is still stagnant, and inflation chopped everything, and there is high cost of passing. Uh, so, that is what is going to happen, or that is what is happening right now that people have the, don't have the capacity uh, to purchase things. So the only thing now is for them to uh, sort of rationalize, choose what is affordable, and uh, maybe uh, forget what is not affordable. Uh, that is why you see that the average family now can hardly have three square meals in a, a, in a day. In fact, mo most of them, or majority, well, with just one uh, square meal uh, in per day. So this is what cut the purchasing power. And with that, you don't expect, uh, people don't have surplus for them to transfer, to keep in the bank. You know, they live hand to mouth. So uh, all these uh, things is what we are seeing, the side effect or the resultant effect of it. That's quite sad and, and unfortunate because I know that we used to have a very blooming economy and people could afford anything. You can go to school, come out, you get a good job, um, you know, you can buy a house, you can buy cars, you can do whatever. But now, to the point that some people cannot afford even one meal, it's quite unfortunate. Like, how did we even get to this point? And I just wonder what the government is really doing about this, because knowing that your citizens cannot afford the basic necessities of life should spiral something out of you. At the end of the day, the security and welfare of the, of the citizens should be paramount. Well, let's move over to the business NG, because it talks about something here that still boils down to inflation. Um, it says fiscal crisis looms as Nigeria's debt inflation spiral out of control. How did we get here? Like for inflation to be over almost about 40% right now, we don't even know what it's going to be at the end of the year. But let's talk about Nigeria's debts. We keep borrowing money. We are not seeing what the monies are being used for. Yet there is so much inflation in the country. Please, what is your take on this? Yeah, this, this is one uh, of the serious problems that we are facing now. Uh, since the deregulation and the subsidy removal and the deregulation of the naira uh, you know the economy was is still going down and despite the fact that um 
in other places and even in Nigeria in the past, where we have such similar things, we tend to cut the cost of governance. But yet, we are having economic challenges and we are increasing the cost of governance. So that is why we keep on borrowing uh, in order to maintain uh, such huge uh, uh, governor and in order to also service uh, uh, the debt that we uh, we incurred earlier on. So it is a vicious cycle of borrowing and going deeper and deeper into the debt trap. So wh what is happening really is the fact that um, our leaders, to say the least, are not prudent in terms of managing uh, national resources. We went ahead, we have gone ahead into borrowing to the extent that now they are seeing uh, the, the debt is almost 50% of our GDP and that the debt services is accounting for about 95% of uh, our um, uh, uh, income. And so this is a situation which in Sena climb will call for a serious rethink and uh, the change of strategy. But we keep on denying uh, this and we keep on hoping that uh, without planning, without taking any action, uh, will be, uh, we'll see the end of the problem. As the saying goes, we'll see the light at the end of the channel. I mean, uh, yes, channel, a uh, tunnel or rather, but up to now, since there is no concrete plan on the ground, and we keep on denying this fact, I don't think we are going to see any light. Even if we are going to see it, it is not going to be soon. It will be far ahead, maybe uh, nobody knows when, but at least we are not taking the right direction now. Well, I kind of agree. I quite agree with you when you said we're not Nigerian politicians or the government is not prudent because you cannot ask um, people to tighten their belts to make sacrifices. Meanwhile, you're not doing the same. Um, cutting the cost of governance is important because it makes you, um, it shows you as a leader, you're leading by example. If you're saying, um, just hold on a little bit, there'll be light at the end of the tunnel. Well, we want to see you doing something um, that we're doing as well to say we can trust you and we know that, yes, you have plans. But if you were to advise, um, what kind of strategies do you think we need to start looking at now? Especially if we want to um, bring our economy to uh, the place where it used to be before, even better. You see, the strategy is what uh, the government is not willing to do. Uh, one, we have to cut uh, this issue of governance, the cost of governance. Uh, we have to be prudent. Uh, secondly, we have to rethink in terms of uh, this issue of uh, devaluation of uh, the Naira, liberalization uh, of the economy. Uh, secondly, or thirdly, we have to, issue with, uh, to look at the issue of uh, this subsidy. Unless the government addresses these things, I think we, we will remain, uh, you know, taking one step forward and perhaps two or three steps backwards because we are an importing economy. We are not producing, we are not manufacturing economy. So where you divide, where you remove subsidies, you know you have to import. And the cost of that importation is such that um, if you devalue your currency, what you used to buy, for example, at uh, when Naira was uh, 400 and something, let's say $500. Uh, uh, yeah, $1 was, uh, let's say, 500 naira. So what you used to buy at the cost of 500, now that you have jacked, uh, you have devalued your currency to uh, 1,400 or 1,500, it means you have to triple uh, what you uh, pay for the same item that you used to buy uh, a year ago. So this is a... a a logical, I mean, very simple economy. What what one will advise the government is for the government to look at this. We, we have to know that the policies and the actions that we have taken, uh, the ones that plunge us into uh, this um, mess, and uh, you know, as a rational policy makers, then you have to look at uh, what are uh, the consequences of this, and now you adjust uh, your policy 
Uh, you can adjust it, or you can uh, modify it, or you can totally abandon it and take another one so that uh, you arrest uh, this situation that you are in now. All right. There's another story here that says NESG Chief Economist, that's the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Um, the Chief Economist urges Nigeria to harness resource potential for economic growth. What do you think the things we're not doing right now when it comes to the growth of our economy? Some things that just needs to be changed, maybe policies. Yeah, you see, uh, I've said what I've said earlier. On the other dimension is that uh, we give lip services uh, to the idea of diversifying the economy. We are still uh, literally a monocrop economy. We depend virtually on uh, oil, and uh, this oil we depend on exportation of the crude oil and importation of refined uh, materials. So unless we take uh, serious and look at other sources, Nigeria uh, is a uh, blessed with abundant uh, resources. Uh, we abundant resources, and we seem or we ignore this uh, aspect, you know, uh, beside the minerals that we have, we also have agriculture. We have very favorable climate and conditions where we can grow uh, virtually everything in our, need, uh, of our needs and exporting. So there should be this issue of, you know, also serious diversification of the economy. That will address the issue of hunger, that will address the issue of inflation, that will also address the issue of over-dependence on the, you know, exportation of things. So this is one way, in addition to what we have said about, uh, you know, uh, rethinking uh, this policy so that when we take it at, uh, holistically in such a situation, I think uh, uh, for immediate and for long term uh, future, will be able to face on the challenges head on. And uh, by doing that, uh, we'll be able to, you know, uh, address them. And what all this takes is the political will to do it. Not gimmick, not propaganda, not anything, but the will to uh, change the system. All right, so talking about, you know, diversifying and even looking at agriculture. So we know that um, the federal government has said they're going to be importing a lot of food and then they've removed the import duty on certain items. But if we look at the Nature News here this morning, it says African Development Bank, that's the AFDB president, who is Dr. Akinwami, um, has set, cautioned Nigeria over food importation policy. Um, well, there's a writer here that says Africa to feed 9.5 billion people by 2050. But when Dr. Akimumi Adishina was talking about this, he was saying that with this um, importation for policy, it will just cr um, cripple the agricultural sector in Nigeria. What do you think we are to do right now? I know that we are blessed with, you know, really good lands. We can actually grow our own food, our own crops. But sadly, there is a lot of insecurity in that sector whereby there isn't enough food um, for the nation because there are farmers who cannot go to their farms. Um, they cannot invest the crops. They cannot, you know, send it to the cities for people to eat. And so, of course, the federal government is looking at other means, which is having to import food. But what is... The Thing that you think we should be doing right now with this especially knowing the fact for the fact that people need this food and if we don't import them they would not have food to eat on the other hand farmers cannot go to their farms so they cannot bring produce for us to eat so at this point what are we supposed to do knowing that whatever decision we make right now is critical and if we make a decision to continue to import food it would cripple our agricultural sector Yes, I quite agree with uh, him that uh, this is a quick fix uh, policy which will have long term negative effect on the agricultural sector and on the economy as a whole. Because by the time you depend on importation, uh, even though the government said they are just going to do this for 150 days, but by the time you do that, uh, at least uh, there will be food, but it may not necessarily be affordable because the the 
importation is going to be in hard currency, and you have already devalued your uh, currency. So by the time you bring it, it will not be within the reach of the ordinary person. It will be there, but uh, not uh, within this. And secondly, it will cripple uh, our own agricultural uh, sector. And um, so what the government ought to do is, we know the challenges in the agricultural sector. Yes, there is insecurity. The government should face uh, that one. And also the government should look at the fact that uh, virtually every state, every sector of Nigerian, I mean state, has certain comparative advantage. Okay, even in areas where you have this, and you can now try other places. And instead of giving lip service to promoting agriculture. The government should actually come in, you know, in terms of like uh, input, agricultural input, the government has to subsidize to make it affordable. Now here, we are in the uh, rainy season here in, in the north, and uh, I know a bag of fertilizer now costs about 40 to 50,000 naira. So where do you expect the, the, the person to get the money? Even if he's able to buy it and put it, you know, at the end of it, uh, uh, he may produce, and then he has to recuperate what uh, he paid. Okay, so what he spent on the issue. So these are the areas where the government knows very well that importation, like I said, is a quick fix policy, and it has negative effect. The government should have seriously pace uh, how to improve uh, agriculture. Okay, there are areas, in fact, where still they have the potential and there are peaceful areas. Why can't the government encourage large-scale large farming in, in these areas? Okay, and uh, then they seriously also face uh, the ch security challenges in uh, the areas. So it has to take what I say, political will, the determination to face this problem head on. But um, we also have to uh, pay the issue of corruption in the area so that at least uh, uh, we will have meaningful results uh, by facing the areas. A small headline here that says Dangote Refinery set to commence fertilizer production. So we're hoping that, you know, that would probably just reduce the the prices of that and people can get their hands on it. Farmers can farm with this and we have better produce for the nation. Let's move over to the Daily Trust. The Daily Trust says six years after Abuja Kajuna Road project uncompleted. And the writers here says my rate of potholes causing vehicle crashes. Commuters demand urgent government action and um, uh, works minister says to be completed in 12 months. Well, now it's promising 12 months, but it's been six years, whereby this same road has been uncompleted. What do you think about our infrastructure system in Nigeria, especially when we know that the government will come and say, you know what, we're going to do this. But then down the line, they just decide not to anymore. And people are left with bad roads, with no development whatsoever, abandoned projects. Shouldn't there be a way to ensure that if you decide to go on a project, the fact that you've started, you must finish it. How do we implement such laws? Yeah, you see, by, by stepping our foot on uh, stepping our foot on the issue, that is how we can address it. Take, for example, this issue of uh, Kaduna Abuja Road, which has been in the open for the last uh, six years. Mm. Okay, already the contract has been awarded, and uh, you know the, the the company is doing the project, and now. They have come out from the news that uh, they want uh, an upward review of the contract. Mm. The contract was given at uh, around 150, 155 or 150 something, not up to 160 billion naira. But now the same company is asking a review uh, to make it 1.3 trillion, about three times the. Wow. So unless. 
Yeah, unless, unless the government is serious and patient, this is what is going to happen. The companies will deliberately delay, and uh, people were within the government will also delay releasing of money and will cause, uh, you know, such a necessary delay, and it will cause a, a lot of uh, hazard on the road. So many people died, so many accidents happened, and yet within these six years, now all that we are hearing is that there is need to review it about three times, and there is also a promise that it is going to be addressed in uh, or finished in the next 12 months. But I think what the government is saying is, is not likely going to happen, because the minister has said that uh, the government doesn't have the money to review uh, it. Uh, as as uh, demand uh, by 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 the company, so I think we'll end up having uh, you know a dilemma. These companies say they have to get review. The government says there is no money, and then uh, the thing will continue. So the, even if it is not abundant, that it will be totally neglected, and uh, the side effect will be. Uh, so many accidents and so many casualties on along the road, like what is happening in so many other places. Yeah. And besides, you see, the Abuja, Kad, Kaduna Road is a, is a national thing. It is also bad for our image. Yeah. You know, this is where we have people, you know, international uh, people coming to, uh, by road services. They have to pass and they see where we are calling ourselves the giant. Uh, of Africa, mm -hmm. and yet we cannot uh, be able to maintain uh, about 300 kilometers of road. Quite unfortunate. Um, finally, let's look at this one that says victims narrate ordeals after school or residential building collapse in just an Abuja. I remember seeing videos of that school that, you know, collapsed. And what do you think about this, especially with the fact that I'm sure there were permits for these buildings, but clearly maybe someone did not do their job and their lives at stake here i remember there was um there was a news that cert a certain woman about three or four of her kids were in that building all gone so what can we do to ensure that when it comes to our infrastructure the build the buildings they can stand the test of time they're building with the right ma materials with standard materials not substandard ones so what can we do when it comes to the infrastructure like this you see, where well, we all have uh, things like this, there are regulations, and they are strictly adhered to by, uh, you know, the people. But what we have is that, uh, you know, there, there, are a lot, there is a lot of corruption there. Even those who will give the permit will now cut corners. Even those who are to do the building will cut corners. Even those who are, uh, you know, in charge of, uh, you know, the, the contract to do it will, will cut corners. And above all, there will be substandard uh, materials, okay? If, for example, the contract says this is the ratio of cement to sand that you are going to, this is the kind of iron that you are going to, these are the kind of things that people will cut corners and put it. And that is why we are having uh, problems. Josh is there, you have so many uh, stories about Abuja, Lagos, and in so many parts of the country, where you have uh, substandard uh, buildings collapsing and, uh, you know, uh, killing uh, people. And uh, I think what we need to do is to abide by the rule, to impose them. You see, there is no short uh, uh, cut to life. There is no short way to development. There is no short way to standard. We have to standardize. We have to go by the rules and we have to impose these uh, rules as there we are talking of lives and properties of uh, human beings. Well, hopefully um, the government is listening and they start to implement all of these um, strict laws and regulations and ensure that we are all safe in Nigeria, our lives and properties are safe. Professor, I want to say thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure reviewing the papers. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you and goodbye. Bye. Okay, we've been speaking with Professor Kamili Sani Fage. He's from the Department of Political Science by Euro University, Kano. And we've just been reviewing the papers, taking global stories that made headlines in our national dailies.